Hi, I'm Deanna Springer with a fun Stitch It Sisters surging project. First, we'll introduce our guest to Stitch It Sisters, Pam Mashey. You may have tuned into Sewing with Nancy and watched as Nancy and Pam explored the basics of using a serger overlocker and beyond. Welcome to Stitch It Sisters, Pam. Thanks, Deanna. It's great to be here with the Nancy Zeman production and Stitch It Sisters teams. You know me, and I absolutely love surging. Today, we're going to be using the Serger Techniques pouch as a foundation as we place all of these different stitches on there. So Deanna, let's take a look at the products we're going to be using to create this pouch. To create our Serger Techniques pouch, we'll be using some Riley Blake fabrics, some sulky threads, we're using 12 weight threads. We'll introduce your no-sew zipper technique by using a pre-made pouch, a pre-made mm -hmm. zipper pouch, and we'll be using our Sturger Techniques pouch sewing pattern. So let's take a look then at the different stitches we're going to be using in this Techniques pouch. Some of those techniques are pretty basic, but when we apply the different threads to these techniques, they can really look very attractive. So we're going to start on the back of our pouch. And when you look at the back and this plaid that we've created, we're going to use a wide cover stitch, a narrow cover stitch, as well as a chain stitch. With that chain stitch, we're also going to be creating the front puffing panel on that center panel for the front of the pouch. From that, we're going to change to a narrow three thread stitch, as well as a three thread flat lock stitch. Then we're going to put on a four thread stitch and put it all together, create some piping. So next, let's go on over to the machine and see how we set it up and dive in to making this great pouch. So here we are at the machines, and we're going to start by using the Bernina Top of the Line L890 Air Threading Serger. We're also going to use the Burnett 42 Funlock. It's a cover stitch only machine. Let's take a look at the project and where we're going to get started. We'll begin stitching our Serger Techniques pouch by starting on the back or the other right side of the pouch. Mm -hmm. And we'll do that by cutting some easy rectangles. We'll cut some fabric rectangles that are 9 by 14 and also a layer of Pellon fleece. And we're using fusible fleece today. So here's our 9 by 14 rectangle of fabric and then a 9 by 14 rectangle of fusible fleece. And we press that to the back of the fabric, mm -hmm. and then we do some marking. Right, and that fusible fleece actually adds a little bit of body to our fabric, which will help support those stitches we're going to place right on top when we get started stitching. Mm -hmm. First, we'll do some marking. We'll mark with a chalk aligner and a ruler, and we'll draw a diagonal line corner to corner. We'll mark one diagonal line in each direction, corner to corner, and then we'll mark every two inches. We'll make a grid we'll make a for grid. Our, mm -hmm. a plaid stitch pattern. Mm -hmm. And you could make that grid whatever size you would like. This way, when you make the grid, you have nice lines that you're going to be following to get started when we do our first line of stitching. So to get started, we are actually going to start with a wide cover stitch on our fabric. Now a wide cover stitch is going to be set up and we're going to be using several different stitches on the back. Starting with that wide cover stitch, we're going to start that first line and grid stitching. So let's come on over and look at the machine and get it set up. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is selecting a wide cover stitch on our machine. And as you can see, we're going to be simply selecting the stitch and the machine automatically sets up that stitch for us. We are using a 12 weight decorative thread in order to thread the machine. Didiana, why don't you tell them a little bit about the decorative thread that we're working with? This is a, a sulky 12 weight thread and it's a heavier, thicker thread. You wouldn't necessarily do garment construction with this, this thread. It's a more decorative thread and it's available in solids and uh, fun blended, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. multicolor spool. And and you can see right there on the pouch how pretty that blendable color thread is when we're going to be stitching that 
wide cover stitch as our first line of stitching. And it kind of gives us a foundation to blend other colored threads with it. Mm -hmm. 12 weight thread is a great weight of thread for you to start working with when you're experimenting with decorative threads and different decorative weights of thread. It feeds beautifully through your machine and it gives a very nice uh, loft to your stitch when you're stitching on either the cover stitch or on an overlock side. Mm -hmm. And we're putting it in the looper. Yes. So it's not going through the needle. So that thicker thread fills in really nicely in those beautiful st stitches. It almost looks like you top stitch trim Correct. onto the fabric. Correct. That wide cover stitch. And we're actually, as you said, putting our decorative thread into the chain looper. And it we're actually going to be stitching on the wrong side of our fabric. So as we start to stitch, you saw that we just easily threaded the machine and we're going to be threading our needles next. And then the needle you're using a standard overlock thread. So Correct. we've chosen a purple overlock thread just uh, to, to put in the two needles. Mm -hmm. And that blends very easily with the thread that we're going to be working mm -hmm. with. Now when you thread your needles and with the air threading machines, you don't have to thread in any sequence or order, which is absolutely fabulous when you're working with decorative threads or you're working with regular threads. Mm -hmm. It doesn't uh, require you to stitch or, or thread in any particular order and making it easy for setup. I love that about the 890. You could start from left to right threading or right to left mm -hmm. or in any order. That's really impressive. It used to be uh, back in, our, in the 80s with our first surgery, we right. had to thread them exactly in order or the thread would be tangled. So mm -hmm. great feature on this lovely new machine. So we've threaded our needles. Now let's take just a little time to talk about needles real quick. So we are using a serger needle, the ELX705 needle. That is a needle that's recommended, especially when you're doing the chain and cover stitching. Because of the formation that it has, it gives you a great loop and a great stitch each and every time, no matter if you're using serger thread or you're using decorative thread. So ELX705 needles. Thank you, Pam. And of course, always start with a fresh needle whenever mm -hmm. you're starting a new project. All right, so now that we're all set up for a wide cover stitch, what we've done is we have actually stitched several rows of stitching already, and I'm just going to show you how we're going to complete the last couple lines of stitching on our fabric. Now, when we're stitching, you will want to follow the markings that you have on the fabric already. On the presser foot, there are these lines and we're going to be using the markings that are on that foot to guide on that line. Because we're using the wide cover stitch, that means we're using the two outside needles, we're going to use the middle mark on the foot to guide on the lines that we've already drawn on the fabric. So now as I stitch, I'm just going to simply go ahead and stitch that line of stitching and Deanna, the hardest part of doing this kind of stitching is that you don't see it right away. The anticipation. You We're stitching it. the reverse side on that marked fusible fleece. Right. So now when we reveal and turn this over, we have that beautiful decorative stitch that we have actually mm -hmm. formed using the wide cover stitch. Okay. So let's just stitch one more line on there and that will complete. Now what I also have is my knee lift that it makes it very easy and convenient to raise that presser foot and keeping both hands on my fabric as I'm going to be guiding the fabric in. All right, so there we go. Now we've completed that first decorative line of stitching on the back of our of our bag. Now when you look at the bag again, we, note, we noted that we were going to be using a wide cover stitch and then the next line of stitching is going to be the narrow cover stitch. Mm -hmm. So the narrow cover stitch is very easy, very easily set up on the machine and all I'm going to do is take my little screwdriver and I'm going to move the needle from the wide cover stitch position on the left over to the center needle position 
and on the screen I'm going to select the narrow cover stitch and that's all there is to it. Super easy. I didn't have to re-thread anything else. Now I will re-thread because I'm going to use another colored thread. Mm -hmm. As we worked with the sulky thread, we selected three different colored threads. That's going to create a great deal of interest on the back side of your bag. If you chose to use the same colored thread, you could certainly just continue to stitch after you've moved that needle. Now, again, I'm just going to place the thread. And as we mentioned earlier, you can thread in any order where this allows us to simply engage our threading tubes, step on the foot pedal, and send that thread all the way through the machine. That is easy threading. Super easy threading. I love it. Okay, now again, we have the next fabric piece where we've actually stitched the majority of the lines for that narrow cover stitch. And again, we're going to find which line we have to stitch on. Now, when we stitch, we had the lines drawn for the first line of stitching. Now, what I'm going to be doing is using the edge of my presser foot as a guide along the left side of the presser foot and then just simply stitching. You're using that convenient width of the presser foot to make those parallel lines of stitching. And you could use multiple colors of marking tools, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. different color chalk aligners, and mark each one of your lines, or use the width of the presser foot as your as guide. As your guide. So either way, uh, sometimes what I'll do is if I have multiple lines of stitching, I will actually draw the lines, like you said, in different colors so I know which lines I'm going to be stitching on and which stitch I'm going to be stitching on. On. And there are really no rules, so you no. could stitch in any no. order you'd like. You could stitch in any order mm -hmm. that you want, and no matter what pattern you're want, wanting, because there are even plaids and there are uneven plaids. Mm -hmm. All right, so next we have, so now we would have a completed panel that would have all of the two thread, or excuse me, the narrow cover stitch. The wide and the narrow, mm -hmm. but we have one more stitch in we thread do. change. We do, we have one more stitch. And you can see again how easy this is going to be to, to change for a chain stitch. Now a chain stitch is a single line of stitching, which in many cases you could also use as just a straight stitch like you do on your sewing machine. Now here's a quick little tip. Whenever you're going to be removing your needle, what I like to do is loosen the needle screw, pull the needle out, and leave the thread attached. So the needle's still threaded. The needle is still threaded, and that's kind of a safety net for uh, your needle, so that in case you accidentally lose grip of the needle, it doesn't mm -hmm. fall down into your machine. So once I have the needle safely in my hand, I'll go ahead and cut that thread. That's a great tip, Pam. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing You're that. Welcome. I've dropped needles down in there, and that means turn the machine off, unplug it, and use your tweezers to fish it out. To you fish don't it out. want to it's start like stitching. playing the operation game, isn't mm -hmm. it? Sometimes? Right, right. Okay, so now that we have the thread uh, changed and we only have one needle in the machine, I am going to make one more thread change, and I'm going to put another colored thread on. Sort of a royal purple to give it some contrast with right. the so it doesn't other stitches. blend mm -hmm. uh, completely with the colors of threads that we. I mean, it blends, but it's not uh, in the same color coloration. All right. So again, we just step on that foot pedal and thread the machine, and don't forget to go ahead and select your stitch right on the screen. And the touch screen is so convenient to be right at your fingertips. It tells you without going to your manual which stitches Stitch. are available and the settings. And it automatically makes those settings for you. So you don't have to remember or uh, write down the, the settings, remember where the settings are that you've written mm -hmm. down, where your instruction book is. It's all right here on your machine. So again, we're going to take our fabric piece and we're going to find the spot where I have a line that I need to stitch. 
Again, we're using the width of our presser foot as a guide, this time on the opposite side of that wide cover stitch, and then simply stitching. Now, one thing that I do like to do, Deanna, is I like to take my Wonder Clips. You can see this nice large area that we have for the fabric to be positioned, but I also like mm -hmm. to take the Wonder Clips and roll up my fabric, and that's going to hold it in place so that I don't have to, especially if I'm working with a much larger mm -hmm. uh, area. It contains the fabric for you. It's mm -hmm. a great use for jumbo Wonder Clips, too. All right, and then it helps you kind of keep track of the lines that you're going to be stitching. Again, using that knee lift that's so convenient and handy, then I can simply hold on to both fa fabrics and send it through the machine. All right, there we go. So now we would have a completed back once again that we will set aside and we'll move on then to the front. But now that I have my chain stitch in set on the machine, I'm going to do one more step. And Deanna, let's go ahead and show them on the front of the bag, we have several different uh, techniques again on the front. The middle technique that we're going to be looking at is called a puffing strip. Now this puffing strip is actually a strip of fabric that is gathered on both sides. And we're going to be using our chain stitch to gather that strip of fabric. Mm -hmm. We did puffing a lot uh, when we were doing heirloom sewing mm -hmm. in the 80s and 90s, a lot of heirloom sewing. And we still do that when we do um, like christening gowns and pillows and things like that. It's a great application. It just uh, adds a nice, a, a nice bit mm -hmm. of texture and to a, a flat, what could be a flat right, fabric. And it takes the work of away from it with the sewing machine we either had to zigzag or do to, two rows of stitching and then gather each side this is magic when you stitch your puffing strip pam right when you when you put one row of stitching down each side and the machine gathers it for you for you it, and and it's completely the same amount on both sides automatically it's a wow factor it certainly is so come on in and let's take a look at how we set that uh, up for creating that puffing so the first thing we're going to do is increase our stitch length. Second thing we're going to do is we are going to increase our differential feed. Now the coolest thing about the machine also, Deanna, is that if I'm not sure what those features are, I can touch the little video camera and on the machine it's actually going to show me what that feature is and again, not having to worry about finding my instruction book. So now that I have my differential feed and my stitch length set at the maximum setting, I'm simply going to take my fabric strip, position it underneath my presser foot, and again, it really doesn't matter if right side is up or right side is down. I do have my decorative thread in my chain looper. It doesn't matter if we use decorative thread or if we're using regular overlock thread. Since we're set up with decorative th thread, we're just going to use that for right now. So now, watch what happens. As I stitch, the fabric is going to be fed in and it's going to gather for me. Now as I stitch, I'm not holding onto the fabric, but I say I tickle the fabric. I just kind of wiggle my fingers on top of that fabric and that's going to help guide the fabric in as I stitch. And you're letting the machine take the fabric from your hand. You're not right. pushing or pulling. And in one step, it gathers that fabric. And that's because you changed the differential, differential feed. feed setting. Right. Mm -hmm. And with the differential feed, if I'm wanting to gather less, or I'm just stitching around the bottom of a hem of a full circular skirt, I could adjust that differential feed to a lower setting and that's going to just ease in my fabric. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm stitching on knit fabrics and I don't want them to stretch out of shape, this is also a great feature on your machines. So now you have this kind of caterpillar looking piece of fabric and you're just going to grab on both sides and kind of wiggle it so that those Gathers. Even out those gathers. That's right. Isn't that? Mm -hmm. I love it. Amazing. I love how easy that is. So mm -hmm. we're just going to set that off to the side and we are going to change to 
our overlock stitch. Now, let's just take a look at the front panel again. We are going to be creating the next step. We're going to be creating this pin tuck panel. And there, we're using a narrow three thread stitch. There's a narrow three thread and there's a narrow rolled hem three thread setting. The difference being is that the narrow hem is going to lay flat and it will allow us to press these pin tucks to one side. A narrow rolled hem, they would be a little bit harder to press and lay flat. Great tip for okay. serger pin tucks. For serger pin tucks. So now what we're going to do is move from the cover stitch side over to the overlock side of our machine. Now when we work with this, and many times when you're changing from one setting to another is where we get kind of confused or it's difficult. But the beautiful part of our L890 is that we have a guided mode. And with this guided mode, I call it the GPS of sewing because it's taking us from where we are to where we want to go. And it's taking us through all of the steps. So now I'm simply going to select the stitch that I'm now wanting to stitch under the overlock setting. And since I know it's stitch number seven, I just simply touch stitch number seven and it now walks me through step by step. So I'm just going to go ahead and make those adjustments, telling me to cut my thread, raise my foot, take those threads out, change my foot. And you're advancing the screens mm -hmm. and it's telling you, okay, now that you have the thread out, time to change the presser foot. Yes, and it takes you in order so that you're not leaving out any step. It also will show me that I need to change my needle and the needle position. So once I have that needle out, I can tip this foot out of the way, which I mm -hmm. absolutely love. That's a wonderful feature. And get my fingers mm -hmm. right inside there. You don't have to remove the foot to make room to, for your hands to change the needles. You just move that foot out of, out the, of way the way temporarily. Right. Okay, so now I have the needle in the proper position. I can tip that foot back. Then it's going to show me the position of my cutting blade and my cutting blade was down because I was sewing in the middle of my fabric. I also want to make sure that I changed my cover from the flatbed sewing cover to the cutting cover. And also, whenever you're working with a cover stitch and sewing in the middle of your fabric, your upper looper is not going to be in sewing position. So we need to activate the upper looper. And to do mm -hmm. this, we just simply turn the lever over, step on our foot pedal, and that upper looper comes right back into the sewing position. And your screen told you to do that. You and did I, not have to remember to do that. I didn't that. have to remember to do that. <laughs> so all of these steps along the way, now even to the point of threading, and if you're not exactly sure how to thread, again, we can thread in absolutely any order, you can touch your video camera and it would show you exactly how to thread your machine. So it doesn't leave anything to our guesstimation or someone once said to me, it protects us from ourselves so we don't have to worry about remembering all of the mm -hmm. steps along the way. And it takes the error out of it. You can feel confident that you'll have a successful project with that expert guided mode. Exactly. Again, air threading. And what we are going to be doing is placing the decorative thread into our upper looper this time. Because when we're working with a narrow hem, the upper looper thread will be seen when we do the narrow stitch. So by placing that decorative thread in the upper looper, we can actually see it. Now with the L890, I also have one path threading. So since I am going to be doing a narrow stitch and I'm going to be using the right needle, I do want to place my thread in the right needle position. And it's all color coded, so there's no guesswork there either. That's right. And the threading order, threaded in any, any order, is also a big plus when you're switching stitches. Okay, so we're just going to thread our needle and then close it up and we're going to be ready to stitch again using the narrow hem that we have on the machine. So what we've done for this strip of fabric for the narrow hem, 
we've actually cut it wider than what we needed. And we measured over two inches, drew a line, folded and stitched. And the fabric, what we did before we uh, actually stitched, we used what I call the magic pen. That's the clover fabric folding pen. And I absolutely love that when I'm going to be doing uh, these narrow hems, but anytime I'm going to be needing to fold my fabric. Because that fabric folding pen, when you draw the line, leaves a line of liquid, which mm -hmm. then when you fold, it creates a very nice crease and softens your fabric so that when you fold it, you're not really having to press it before you actually come to the sewing machine right. and stitch it. Right, and, you, and it assures that your lines will be parallel. You, your folds won't be crooked right. when you pre when you pre market with a fabric folding pen. Right, absolutely. So we've stitched three lines, and I have one more line that I'm going to be stitching here. Now, when I stitch, just like I did when I did the narrow, uh, the cover stitches, I use the edge of my presser foot as a guide. I like to do that because then again, I know that each of my lines are going to be even and they're going to be consistently spaced between each other. So again, I'm going to be placing the left edge of the fabric along the previously stitched pin tuck. So now as I stitch, I'm just going to stitch and it will create the tuck. Now when you're stitching, if you want to create a tuck that's wider, you can set your stitch width at a wider setting. If you want a narrower line of stitching, then set your stitch width at a smaller setting. Okay, so we've stitched all three of those pin tucks and we've stitched it on a longer piece of fabric because we're going to be cutting that in half after we have our sides all put together. Trimmed on either side to one inch from each of those pin tucks. And then you'll cut that strip in half and one will become the left and one will be the right. Mm -hmm. And reverse pin tucks from just one strip section. of fabric. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So next, what we're going to do is we are going to be setting up for a three thread flat lock stitch. Now a flat lock stitch, you can either do with a two thread stitch or you can do with a three thread stitch. Today, we're going to use a three thread stitch because we're almost already set up for that stitch. Simply by adjusting the width of our stitch and making an adjustment to the stitch, we're going to be there without having to make any adjustments to our thread positions. So we simply select the stitch and the beautiful part of the L890 is that we also have the ability to save the stitches into memory. So what I have done is I have actually saved the stitch into memory under NZP because that's the one I know I want to use for this particular setup. When we were developing the project yesterday, we uh, came up with the stitches and mm -hmm. you modified it just to the right beautiful stitch that you wanted and you saved and it. And I saved it so I didn't mm -hmm. have to write it down. I didn't have to mm -hmm. remember what those mm -hmm. settings were going to be. I can save it right, right into in the, the machine. machine. And I can label that up to 40 different characters. So I could label it by technique. I could label it by thread. I could label it by uh, the time of the day that I decided to put this stitch together. And it remembers that for me. <laughs> So now that I have this already set up, all I'm going to do is widen out the width of my stitch to the widest setting. And because I had been set on a rolled hem or a narrow hem, I am actually going to be moving this stitch former back into sewing position so it does give me a much wider stitch. Now with a flat lock, whether it's a three thread or a two thread stitch, you have actually two sides to that stitch. And today for our technique, we are going to be using two strips of fabric. And as you see on our project, we have the outside strip and our pin tuck strip. We're going to start by placing wrong sides of our fabric together. So remember that when you're stitching this, wrong sides of your fabric are going to go together. Now then, I'm simply going to slide my fabric up underneath the presser foot 
and stitch. It's as easy as that. The machine is already set up so that as I stitch, I'm just trimming and skimming the edge of my fabric. And I'll stitch the length. All right, now here's where the magic comes in in this stitch. Typically, when you're stitching, you have a seam allowance that has been created. Now with this stitch, I can simply wiggle on the stitch and the stitch pulls apart and it's going to be laying flat after I've pulled all along that line of stitching. You're opening okay. that seam. I'm opening the seam. You're flattening out the fabrics. So see, this is the back side and you can see that on the back side that stitch lays completely flat. It has like little ladders on the back side. So now that I have this side panel completely stitched in place, the next step is we are going to be switching over to a four thread overlock stitch. To switch to a four thread overlock stitch, again, on my screen, I'm going to simply select four thread overlock stitch, touch the check mark, and if I'm not sure how to do that, I could again go to that guided mode. I am going to be using four of the standard overlock threads. So I will remove the decorative thread from the upper looper and I'm going to place another cone of thread in the upper looper. And again, those other two threads can stay completely threaded. Because we can thread in any yeah. order. Love that. And you see how the thread just flies right through the machine. Then I will add another needle. I love that it has this little needle pad that holds the needles there too. A little onboard way of staying organized. Yeah, because I, at my house too, you know, I can never find the parts that I need at the time that I need them. So any help that the machine mm -hmm. can give me with all of my tools being right mm -hmm. here on board uh, makes it so much easier. So now just adding the left needle thread. And this is the stitch we're most familiar, familiar with with our serger overlock mach machines. We stitch our garment seams with this four thread overlock stitch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's a very stretchy, flexible seam as well that you could use for knit fabrics. You can also, as we're working with it, I think many times we think that, oh, an overlock is, or serger is only for stitching on knit fabrics. But as you can see, we've stitched a great deal with all of these being woven fabrics. All right, so now I'm set for a four thread stitch, but I am going to be changing my foot and I'm going to be placing on a piping foot. Now, if you've never made piping with a serger before, you are absolutely going to love this. Now the piping that we make we're going to be simply using a cotton cord, okay? Mm -hmm. And the cotton cord that we use, I like to use that tape. The, the sewer's fix-it tape. So you, before you cut your length, mm -hmm. put a little sewer's fix-it tape on that seam or where you're going to cut the, the piping uh, cording apart. Right, because that prevents it from raveling. And mm -hmm. the other nice part about that tape is that even if you sew through it, you're not going to gum up your needle. You won't break a needle. You won't break that's a needle. That's soft, mm -hmm. that's a soft tape. That's why we call it source fix-it tape. We have a lot of uses for it in the sewing room. Right, now when you cut your cord, you want your cord to be at least two inches longer than the finished size that you want. Because we're going to take this cording and we're going to be resting it into the foot and there's a groove that's on the underside of that foot and the groove just holds that piping in place. Next, we're going to take a strip of fabric and we're going to simply wrap our, the strip of fabric right around the cotton cording. And we've cut that strip longer too so we can trim some off so that you have an even seam allowance to the piping. Right, and it really doesn't even matter what width you mm -hmm. cut. You could cut just a scrap of fabric as you're stitching. The key to all of this is that, one, make sure that your cutting blade is in the cutting <laughs> position. Second, you want to have your stitch width set at five and a half to six in, in width. 
because then when you stitch this, you're going to see that it will, oh, the other uh, point I do want to make is that let's lengthen our stitch. Because we're going to be stitching several lines of stitching mm -hmm. on top of each other, having a longer stitch length will again prevent the threads from building up on top of themselves. So now as we stitch, you can see like magic, it goes into the foot one width, it comes out of the foot, a perfectly mm -hmm. sized piping. Already cut and your seam allowance exactly the width that's going to be needed to sew it back in when we assemble our bag. Now there's two sizes of piping feet. This is the three millimeters, so it's the smaller size, and there's a five millimeter size as well for a heavier type of cording. Mm -hmm. And we can see the piping inserted into our pouch right between the center and the pin tuck panel. It's tucked right in there. Right, so I'm going to take the piping that we've made, and as you can see, our piping, our pin tuck panel, and our outside panel are all the same length. They're much longer than what you might expect we might need. About twice as long, a little bit more than twice as long as the panel we need. Right, so next, we're going to again, leaving the piping foot on the machine, you're simply going to slide the already made piping into that groove once again. Now, let's widen that width just a little bit because then it will cover up the stitches that we just used to make the piping and stitch it in place. Leaving that stitch length longer again because we have another line of stitching. As you stitch this in place, just let the piping slide over your fingers. Don't try and hold it or pull it because that will, uh, it won't attach flat as you're stitching. Mm -hmm. All right, now we have our piping attached, we have our pin tuck panel, and that outside panel that's already put together. Mm -hmm. So what do we do next, Deanna? We'll do a little pressing, mm -hmm. and then fold it in half, and we'll trim. So either at the cutting mat, or with your scissors, you mm -hmm. can cut that panel in half. We're creating one panel to cut into two to so make you, two panels. So you see, we've just mm -hmm. taken that panel, folded it in half, mm -hmm. and we're just going to take our scissors here, and just cut straight across. And now we've created, magically, a left side and a right mm -hmm. side. And the next step is to attach that piece of puffing that we made in the previous steps with the chain stitch. And we're going to insert that right on top. Now what I'm going to do is attach my large piping foot when I do that attachment because I have a mu multiple layers of fabric, and again, the larger piping foot will accommodate the puffing as well as the cording. So now, I'm just again going to insert, placing right sides together. We're building that panel. Mm -hmm. That center panel. And I'm going to widen my stitch just a little bit. So now as I stitch, those that ruffle that I just made, we want those ruffled pieces to lay flat. And here again, you may want to sew a little bit more slowly. We can sew at 1,500 stitches per minute, not that we always have to. Maybe not right here, right. but let the machine take the project. You'll, you'll make sure that the uh, gathers are even and let the machine take the, the stitching. So there we have one mm -hmm. side already stitched on. Then we'll simply take the other side and stitch just like we did the first side. Now as you stitch the second side, again, make sure that you are keeping those gathers laying uh, perpendicular to the area that you're going to be stitching so that they're straight across as you're stitching. And we still have that piping foot attached. The piping foot is attached because we still are stitching with piping and it's guiding. That foot is guiding the project straight into the machine 
with that channel following the piping cording. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I'll have people say, wow, you know, how can you make it look so easy and you make the stitching look so good even when you're stitching on a program? Well, a lot of times it's the foot. It's the right foot, it's the right machine, and here we have e very easily constructed that front part of our pouch. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a little bit bigger than the front of our pouch. Mm -hmm. And after we have it all stitched together and pressed, we are going to be taking the 9 by 14 fusible fleece again, just like we did, so the weight of the front is the same as the weight on the back of our pouch, and we're going to be centering that fusible fleece right in the middle of that panel that we've just created. Mm -hmm. And we fuse it, it's the fusible fleece, we fuse it into place. Right, right, it's all fused in place. Then, what I would do is I would take this to my rotary cutting mat, and I would trim all the way around the outside. We're just going to take our scissors, or if you don't have a rotary cutting mat, just take your scissors and trim right around the outside of that fleece, and that's going to give you the exact size that you're going to be needing for the front of your pouch. Okay, so we have the front of our pouch and the back of our pouch that we've created using, again, all of those decorative stitches we've mm -hmm. just talked about. This is just a really fun way of using what could be basic stitches and applying them in a very decorative, functional way, and a great way that you can use uh, and store your project in. Mm -hmm. Now, now we turn it into a pouch, a zippered pouch, but we're not sewing a zipper today. No, can, can you believe that? We're gonna be using a pouch that, the zipper pouch, that's already has the zipper in. Mm -hmm. So when we stitch this, to stitch this in place, we actually take and cut off that bottom portion mm -hmm. of that mesh bag, and I'm going to open up the side seams. We're still set on a four thread overlock stitch to create the pouch itself. So we're going to fold to find the middle, because the panels might be just a little bit bigger than what your pouch itself is. So we'll fold and find the center of both the project, the panel, and the lining. That poly mesh. And the poly pouch. mesh bag. Yeah. Now make sure that when you stitch this in place, that you're placing the right side of your pouch, mm -hmm. of your fabric mm -hmm. piece that you just created. We're constructing now, so it's mm -hmm. right side to right side. Right side to right side. And then we're going to be taking our lining and we're going to be sandwiching that pouch between the outside panel and the lining. Now the reason that I do this is because then I don't have to worry about using a Teflon foot or having my pouch stick as I'm going to be stitching with a four thread overlock stitch. So you've sandwiched the zipper pouch edge with the panel. So you've layered right sides together that front panel with the zipper pouch and then a lining, a, just a rectangle, it's the inner tote, it's the inner pouch. And it's just sandwiching one layer, just one side of that pouch that you opened up. Mm -hmm. So you wanna make sure you keep that other edge out of the way, right sides together, sandwiching that pouch. So there's no drag on the presser foot because like you said, you have fabric on each side. Right. You can also adjust the pressure on your presser foot, if need be, with the adjustment on the top of your machine. But as we said, it very, very seldom is necessary because the fabric is going to be resting on the bottom as well as on the top of that vinyl pouch. Mm -hmm. And we have a size 90 needle in, so we know we can stitch through the vinyl. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just stitching straight across. Just make sure that that other side of your pouch is out of the way. And keep all of your layers aligned as you're stitching.
and then we'll repeat and do exactly the same mm -hmm. thing on the other side. So let's show what it looks oh, like now sure. when you turn it right side out. You've just stitched it to just one of the sections, one side of the pouch. You've sandwiched the edge of that between the two right side mm -hmm. fabrics and stitched with that seam allowance. And that's a finished seam then on the inside and the outside. Right. So we'll do it again for... For the other side. Right. And it doesn't matter if you're using or placing the back on first or the front on first, as long as you have both sides and you're placing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. front and back right. on the outer edge right. of that pouch. All right, so now we have both the back and the front and our linings. Mm -hmm all sewn to the top of that zipper pouch. And it's flat construction, mm -hmm. a favorite technique of our longtime friend, Nancy Zeman, flat construction. You're constructing the front and back separately flat and then assembling it into the bag. Right, so now we're going to just place right sides together. And again, with a four thread overlock stitch, I want to make sure that my sides are matching right at the join where the pouch is and the front and back of our bag. Mm -hmm. Okay, just slide that up underneath your presser foot and start to stitch. And adjust those layers, making sure that you're catching all the layers within the seam allowance and trimming some off for that nice clean seam. Right, and if they're not exactly even, let your machine cut them off so that they mm -hmm. are. Okay, so we'll do one side and then we'll come to the other side and I'll like to pull my zipper so that it's away from that corner, mm -hmm. but not all the way. Not all the way because we need to turn it. <laughs> we need to turn it right sides out. That's right. So keep those edges flat. And now as we stitch, we're just going to stitch down the side. Okay, keep all of those e edges even. And you're just trimming off those edges and the seam is so neat and it's tidy. So neat you and would flat. think that you cut your rectangles that side. Exactly. But that knife cutting a blade, trimming the seams as you go is such Keeps an added benefit. Everything nice and even. and we're going to stitch just straight along that bottom edge. And after we have mm -hmm. it stitched, then we're going to create that mm -hmm. little pleat down at the bottom. Because right now it's a flat pouch. Right. It's a flat pouch. If you left it that way, there'd be no dimension, there'd be no right. width to the bag. Mm -hmm. So we need to create a little gusset. So now we're going to simply pinch the bottom and the side, just pinch those together. Aligning that side seam with that bottom center seam. Mm -hmm. Now, we could measure, if we were at home, we would get up and we would probably measure up a certain depth. Here, I'm just going to use an, a, an alignment point that's on the machine so that they're consistent from the left side to the right side. That's a great tip. Use those machine features for guided measurements. Right. And again, that thickness, it just cuts right through it. Because we have nine millimeter wide width on our machine, our cutting blade also comes up higher. So that gives us a larger uh, depth of fabric mm -hmm. that we can actually cut through. More layers. More layers, and we have a DC motor. Mm. So that also helps in the penetration of the stitching. The machine's not bogging down at all with all these layers, these, even with that Pellon fleece, two layers of Pellon fleece. Right. All right, so now we have those corners that are boxed mm -hmm. down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. We have a few thread tails, and we don't want to cut those off. We want to insert those back into the seam with a double eye needle. Mm -hmm. So you just 
take the double eye needle, it's, it looks like a, a hand sewing needle, but it has eyes on both, both ends. Sides. Mm -hmm. And you thread this tail through the eye and pull it back through into the previously stitched thread. Which is going to help secure that seam and it mm -hmm. doesn't then pull out, especially in an area like the zipper that is going to have a little bit of stress on mm -hmm. it. Okay, mm -hmm. so are we ready for the big mm -hmm. reveal? Mm -hmm. We're turning. Oh, we're gonna turn, we're gonna turn right side out. Completely stitched on the serger. And I'll let you mm -hmm. poke those corners mm -hmm. out. We take the point to point turner and we pop out those little corners. Just press that point to point turner right along the seam and have those corners nice and crisp. And just like that, you have a bag. We your have bag matching finished. bags. There we go. Yeah. So now you have your bag that we've completely done on our serger. We've shown you how to use decorative threads. We've talked about how to use those stitches that are typically very functional stitches and we've used them in a very decorative and creative way. So mm -hmm. I just had a really great time here today being able to spend showing all the great features and ways that you can use a serger and kind of coming off the edge, so to speak. And Pam, we've so enjoyed having you on Stitch It Sisters. It's you're so creative and you have such great ideas. It was fun collaborating on the Serger Techniques pouch with you. And all of the techniques we talked about, dimensions to make the Serger Techniques pouch are included in the Serger Techniques pattern designed by Pam. Thank you, Pam, so much for sharing all of your talents with us and inspiring us to use our sergers and all these features uh, to make beautiful projects. And so I'm sure your, your friends that have sergers will be envious of all the ways now you know how to use your serger. We hope you've enjoyed the Stitch It Sisters project. You'll find this pattern along with a limited number of bundle boxes at stitchitsisters.com. Be sure to tune in again for another Stitch It Sisters sewing adventure. In the meantime, connect with Stitch It Sisters and friends on our social sites. Stitch It Sisters is made possible by Bernina, Clover, Riley Blake Designs, OESD, Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design, and ShopNZP.com. Bernina, made to create.